When our financial system is working properly, it supports and sustains development. It is thanks to economic development, mainly in the new emerging market economies, that over the last half century, the share of the world's population living in extreme poverty has fallen from more than 30% to roughly 10%. Financial innovation is an important part of this story. Innovation is happening all around us. The digital revolution is changing the ways in which we work, organize our lives, buy and sell and interact with one another. It seems hard to believe, but it's true. The smartphone you carry around in your pocket has got at least 1 million times more RAM memory and 100,000 times more processing power than the onboard computer that guided Apollo 11 onto the moon in July 1969. A big challenge for our generation and the next is to apply digital technology and financial innovations in such a way that they support human development goals, that they contribute to the public good. Underdevelopment and climate change are without doubt the two biggest issues our modern world is confronted with. Promoting development through finance is something central banks and the BIS are very familiar with. It starts with what we call improving financial inclusion. Financial inclusion makes it easier for people uh, to access and use financial services. Figures show that worldwide, uh, one in four adults still do not have access to financial services. This is roughly 1.6 billion people. This is a problem because uh, limited access can reinforce poverty, it can worsen social exclusion, and it can hinder economic activity. Uh, conversely, financial inclusion can promote borrowing and savings, it can open the doors for insurance and investment opportunities. And more generally, it lets people take part in the formal economy. So ultimately, financial inclusion is a development goal. For instance, the Digital Identity Program in India has made opening and using financial accounts much easier. Likewise, mobile payment technology has been a life-changing innovation for individuals and businesses in Africa and China. Thanks to such innovations, it is estimated that in the last decade, hundreds of millions of people globally have increased their financial engagement. Uh, going forward, uh, BIS Innovation Hub's Singapore Centre uh, will be working towards developing a digital identity-based public infrastructure uh, that can be used for the provision of other financial services. And central banks and the BIS uh, more generally collaborate with other stakeholders on these issues, such as the World Bank, the IMF, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and uh, UN Secretary General Special Advocate on Financial Inclusion, Queen Maxima of the Netherlands. So financial innovation is accelerating the process of financial inclusion. But can it also help us in our fight against climate change? Perhaps. For some time now, central banks have taken an interest in so-called green finance. Sounds good, but what is it? Uh, central banks uh, are increasingly aware of uh, climate-related uh, uh, risks. Uh, these risks uh, pose a severe threat to financial stability, which is in the mandate of central banks. And to address uh, those, they have constituted under the leadership of the uh, Central Bank of the Netherlands and the uh, Banque de France, the network for uh, greening the financial system, the NGFS. Many central banks uh, meet there. The BIS uh, is also there, representing uh, uh, the uh, institution. And there uh, we study how uh, best central banks and supervisors can work together to address uh, climate-related uh, risks. Most central banks have considerable reserves at their disposal. When investing these reserves, they normally have three objectives in mind, liquidity, safety, and return. Today, several central banks already include a fourth objective, sustainability. This is a powerful incentive to invest in projects that promote and accelerate the transition to a more environmentally sustainable global economy. Green Finance. <laughs>